Good morning. Um, that's a very kind introduction and a very kind applause. Um, as you know, we usually talk about the future here because we're very focused on trying to understand what the future is going to yield so that we can help you all build the most successful businesses that you can build. And so the theme, again, is about the future. And so I asked for a picture, and this was the picture they came up with for the future. I thought it was very nice, a sunrise. But actually, I don't know about you, but actually it reminds me of just getting out of the house. So I'd like to thank all of you for soldiering on and joining us after a year and a half of this pandemic, skipping last year's connections. Thanks for being here and embracing the space. So with that, let's get on with it, shall we? And by doing that, I'd actually like to go back and talk about what we've talked about before, which was we've been at this a long time. Back in 2015, we talked about owning the antenna. Many of you may have been here at that time. In 2016, we spoke about building an always-on infrastructure, an always-on network, because we felt that that was going to be key to the future business model that you would all deploy. If you take those two and put them together, we talked about what does this business model look like for the winning broadband service provider of the future. In 2018, we talked about us, the device-enabled subscriber, that would be at the other end of that network that we would focus our energies on. And that device-enabled subscriber would in fact be the driving force of the change that we would have to accommodate. We then, in 2019, which was the last time we were all together, we spoke about that device-enabled subscriber and how much complexity was happening in the home. You may remember the Peloton of this world, video conferencing. We didn't know at that time just how important video conferencing was about to become. And that complexity in 2020 we spoke about, the only way to deal with it and to deliver the subscriber experience that our subscribers want is to become a data-driven service provider. And so, what I was trying to point out with these slides, although you may question the wisdom of my putting up a graphic depiction of the color of my hair, <laughs> now that I look at it, I should stand on this side, I see, um, was we've been at this future vision for a long time. And long before we came to Vegas and to the win, we actually, believe it or not, introduced our first cloud in 2011, and we called it Compass. And over 500 customers deployed Compass. And we kept swizzling with it based upon feedback from you all as we worked on this model. What's the point? The point is, the future is now. It's here. And all of you are experiencing it. And many of you have taken a leadership role in converting this future into the present. And in fact, it is our belief that everything that you need to build that next generation broadband service provider, you have. And many of you are deploying one or more of these things. Where did this come from? What drove this 10 years or more of thinking? Well, it was a very simple insight. And it goes back to that device-enabled subscriber. Earlier in my career, I had the privilege of working for a device company back in the mid-90s. And it was very clear, if you watched that market, that something like an iPhone was going to happen. If you're as old as I am, you may remember PDAs, which is not a public dis display of affection. It was a personal digital assistant. How many of you had Palm Pilots? And if you remember the Palm Pilot, that was a personal digital assistant. It was really the first one that was successful. I had a drawer full of ones, like Apple Newtons and other things of that nature. What made it successful was there was enough of a trade-off that made it a device that you could actually use. It was very clear they were coming, and they were going to enable the subscriber to do many things. But there was one more ingredient that was necessary, and that was a pervasive broadband connection 
because back in those days, there wasn't one. But in the early 2000s, they started showing up as Intel drove Wi-Fi chips onto the motherboard, and we all of a sudden had hotspots at Starbucks. And so if you could assume a pervasive broadband connection, well, then you ended up in this world. Why? Because those engineers that are designing those devices, if you said, hey, this is always connected, they're going to push the applications and the content over there. And they're going to focus on the user experience and battery life. And so what happened in this world is it immediately changed everything. Gone were the business models that were tied to a service. Voice calls came over twisted pair from a voice service provider. Mobile calls came from a wireless provider. TV came from a cable provider. Gone. Because I can do every service on my device, and I can get the application and the content from the cloud. And all of a sudden, we all went from pipe providers to true service providers. Because what's in between is the high ground. And it's focused on the subscriber experience. You have the strategic high ground. Because me, as a device-enabled subscriber, can't get there without an excellent subscriber experience. And so this is what drove our thinking of the future. And we simply sat down many years ago and got to a whiteboard and said, what's that network going to look like? Well, if all those devices have an IP address, a wireless physical interface, a control mechanism, they're all going to connect wirelessly. And so there's going to be a range of antennas. Today, 5G and Wi-Fi 6. They're going to be connected back to a building that's going to sit somewhere on the edge of that cloud. And there's your two networks, the data center network and the subscriber-facing network. And you would take those subscriber-facing functions and bring them into the subscriber network and focus solely on that experience. Now, you probably wouldn't build point-to-point -point fibers to all of those antennas. And as we spoke about it, we said we would go and build a pond. And ultimately, that pond would have colors or lambdas on it. But that's what the future network will look like. That future network enables an entirely different business model, and one that opens up an entirely different opportunity unless you're an over-the-top player. Because the over-the-top players would like to make you a dumb pipe. And they've got some really odd ways of doing it. I don't know if you've all seen the security thing that's going to wheel around your house. This fight is about the subscriber experience and the data. They believe they own the subscriber experience. We believe you own the subscriber experience. Let me say that again. They believe they own the subscriber experience, and they would be perfectly happy to have a set of dumb pipe providers in between them and the device-enabled subscriber. We believe that's the province of our customers. And that's why when we look at this world, we're engaged in this fight. We're engaged in the fight to help you push that back to where it should be, to push it all the way over, so that we're not trying to go and do the over-the-top player's job. We're not advocating that our customers build search engines or get into the movie production business, merely that the subscriber experience is owned by the service provider. How do we know this? Because many of you have subscribers that rate you extremely highly, that when you deploy these platforms, you can create a subscriber experience that's second to none. Many of your subscribers love you. That is not a common term in the service provider industry. But you all know who you are, and you've been doing exactly that. And it is enormously energizing to be part of that effort. And so when we go and look at what we've built, we've built persona-based clouds to help each of the functions in your company provide those insights on that data that enable you to bring 
an outstanding subscriber experience to all of your subscribers. By the way, we also produce systems, resources if you will, that sit underneath these platforms to enable them to function in the network. And here's a key to understanding how we are approaching all of you. These systems over here, as you know from history, we're a big fan of purple. And it says right on there, Calyx. And for the network engineers in this room, we're very proud of what we've been able to build and help you build from an infrastructure standpoint. But if you're going to focus on the subscriber experience, if that's the way that you're going to build value, then it's very important that the systems that are adjacent to your subscribers say nothing of Calyx. They are totally focused on building your value and building your brand. Because in the end, if a subscriber says they love their service provider, they probably know your name. And many of you have already engaged in that by putting your name on those systems. Nowhere does it say Calyx, nor will it ever. Because in the eyes of the subscriber, our job is to help you build your value and your brand. And even closer to the subscriber is the application that they use to manage their environment. And for those of you who have deployed it, you know that that app is also made to be branded by all of you. And herein lies the shift of those last five years that you saw me on the screen going from black to gray. And you might say, boy, that sounds like it must have been a lot of work. It's actually been a lot of work and extraordinarily exciting. Why? Because we've always, I think, done a good job of trying to do the right thing for our customers. But in these, in these last few years, the culture has transformed into one that's trying to help our customers succeed. And it's enormously en energizing for all of our people to be able to get in the boat and row along with our customers to help you build a more valuable entity. And we take it personally. That happens to be from a leadership conference that we had two weeks ago. Don't ask. Please don't ask. Ask them when you see them. But look, it's a, it's a great environment. Our folks are very energized. But these are the people that every day are in the boat with you to help you succeed. Every day are listening to your ideas about how we can help you succeed better, faster. How we can help you eliminate churn, raise your net promoter scores, raise your revenue opportunities, raise your subscriber loyalty. Every single day, this team is after that, and it courses through the culture. And every day, this team is led by our president and chief operating officer and my partner, Michael Weening. Michael? Walking away from you.